looking back on all the stuff I did, mm. whether it be help or one yeah. hard day's yeah. night, that was a diary. Mm. But it was then a diary of four people and all, yeah. or one each person's mm. diary with the others overlapping. Yeah. So therefore, it, be, it mm. became more of a movie than yeah. just a diary. And so that that was happening whether you want it or not. Mm. Now maybe it's a bit more conscious. Mm. On the first two albums, I was making my album, you know, sort of, mm. I can do it on my own, but we all were doing that. Yeah. For some time, New York City, we were just, let's go in and do mm. it, you know, let's do it. It's not, we're not, yeah. we weren't setting out to make uh, the Brandenburg Concerto. Yeah. And the newspaper thing was to sort of push that home, mm. not to make it more yeah. uh, serious or whatever the word is. That was to get that feeling across. It wasn't the masterpiece that everybody's always trying to write, paint, yeah. draw or film. No intention of that. Just go in, do it, put it out. Mm. The next one's coming up. Yeah. I mean, we, we needn't have even done it and just mm. sat around and uh, sat and imagined yeah. for a few years. Yeah. How do you, all right, how do you look on the past then? Do you listen to, do you Favorably, the Beatle cartoons come on yeah. on Sunday, and I yeah. get a kick out of it. Yeah, know? yeah, it's fine. It's like uh, yeah, once you leave home, yeah. it's okay. You know, you can get on with your parents, right? With the well, for the first year yeah. or so, I think we were all, well, maybe Paul and I, or whatever. The feeling was disassociation yeah. with it to try and identify ourselves mm. as individuals, and then after that, you think, well, you know, you can never stop the bus driver. Mm who remembers that or the taxi driver who doesn't remember it. Mm. So forget it. Mm. And so therefore it's just as, as pleasant as for any other person thinking, oh, remember the 60s, how old, mm. you know. I tend to remember before Beatles, yeah, I remember Hamburg, if I'm talking about Beatles, yeah. I tell them, oh, we were, in Hamburg we used to do this, or in the cabin we used to do this, or in Liverpool, in the, the ballrooms we did this, you know. So when you're a child, you're surrounded yeah. by relatives. Yeah. And most of us, uh, seem to get in a position where we create a new set of relatives, mm. you know, friends and advisors, however well-meaning. And I think that's what happens to you. You become in a position where you get so much money, mm. and then if you like us, you, you know that a lot of other people got more. So you go through that bit about, well, why did they get more than us? Didn't we do the work? Wasn't mm. us? We wrote it, didn't we? We made the record. And then you go through the way those people, whoever they may be, that yeah. are on the fringes of artists, create a situation where you either always in fear of being hit by tax and Mickey Rooney, yeah. or you've spent so much because you're living a, a life that's you don't even think about it. So you're always in a sort of position where you're worried that you might end up owing it or they're going to yeah. take whatever you had away. And the kind of people who get in a position like that are people who are insecure anyway. Yeah, you know, you like me or whoever it. it is. So they get you up there. You go up there. You collect it. Mm -hmm. You're insecure enough to want to do it. Or whatever reasons. You do it, then you're surrounded and you're scared that they'll take it away from you. Did you ever find in the past... And so you go round and round in circles forever. Did you ever find a, t uh, a time maybe in the past where you almost lost the touch with reality? Well, many times, but probably... Uh, I think most people do all the time, actually, even in the factory or whatever it may be. Yeah. It's just that uh, being a quote star or whatever it was that happened, yeah. it's just a little more unreal. Look, a working guy will get lost on a, on a weekend mm -hmm. or, or pissed and forget who he is or do whatever yeah. or dream he's so and so in his car or he's going to get mm. so and so. And it's the same for us, but instead of getting getting blotto for a weekend, we might we might have got blotto for two months or something, mm. trying to forget whatever it was yeah. everybody tries to forget all the time. So it's a, it's almost the same as everybody else, but more more so. You know, daily worries, whatever they are, instead yeah. of worrying about who's going to pay the milkman, you worry about who's going to pay whatever it whatever you've spent. You know, it's it's just relative. I mean, did you ever sort of wake up say during the Beatle days and think, God, what's happening to me, or anything like that? I think around about health, you know. Yeah. It was really getting weird then. Yeah. I can only <clears throat> judge it by that. Hard days, night, and that we were still had one foot in yeah. the backyard, you know. And sort of, although we were one retained cynicism, yeah. you know, it's, you can be a, a non cynical old cynical 
person, you know, being cynical about mm -hmm. being in the king's court. See, people yeah. jumped on the, the Beatles and screamed mm -hmm. after it was like when the rock around the clock went round, yeah. or like whenever, whoever it is, T-Rex or whatever, mm -hmm. because that's what's supposed to happen at those concerts. Yeah. And uh, at the beginning it's encouraged, and when it starts happening, it's supposed to go on happening all yeah. the time. But uh, that was what was uninteresting about it. And so, not that I think, you know, I could probably play Elvis Jagger with, mm -hmm. you know, the white suit and the lipstick or whatever it is mm -hmm. and say come on you know whether it would happen mm -hmm. if one did that or not I'm not sure but it's just not interesting the music is what the only thing that's worth doing yeah. and the communication of that to whoever's listening whether it be record or live audience and most other things to me interfere whether it's what you're wearing or who you are or how the lights yeah. go if the yeah. music's all right, it doesn't matter what's happening. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter where you are, what's going on. If you had gone on and sort of done... Um, all these night hell. And all these things, but sort of done, well, I've got to do them because they're what you paid to come in to see. Well, it got a bit like yeah. that with, uh, you know, them. Yeah. When we were doing it because it was a repetition, you know. It's, it's too long a story, but it started happening as soon as we left the ballroom and went into the theatre. And you don't play an hour and a half or two hours, you suddenly got to do it all in 20 minutes. And when you've got a hit, it becomes stylized yeah. anyway. And if you don't get out of that, you end up not enjoying yourself you know, for money. You know. When the, the split came, if you hadn't met Yoko, do you think you might have become a recluse? <laughs> no, no. I couldn't have become anything other yeah. than what I was going to become. At the time, I wouldn't have become a recluse because the Beatles knew they were doing the last tour. Yeah when they were doing it uh, and sort of the, the happenings from the Klu Klux Klan and Manila were the, like the top hat but that we decided then. Now the first thing I did was jump into how I won the war with Dick Lester mm. because I wasn't about to become a recluse yeah. but I do recluse every now and then just to recharge the batteries for whatever's coming next but I couldn't survive you know being a recluse I might have made a few weird albums or something, I don't know, but I could never have done it. The first, the, I call it the Working Last Hero album, was done after a, a period off, mm -hmm. and it was the first one alone. Mm -hmm. So the, God knows what I was thinking when I went in the studio, yeah. you know. It's, it always ends up the same way, mm -hmm. I noticed on each session. It's irrespective of what idea you went in with or how you were nervous or not nervous. And then, so that was, like uh, first diving in the water, mm. second one, you think, oh well, you know, okay, now we know what we do, we do this and we do that. Third one was, okay, oh, I don't do that, you know. And the next one, you think, oh, should we do this? So it, it changes every time, there's no way of putting a mm. finger on it. Uh, I'm still probably reacting to, quote, Beatle recording sessions, yeah. which mm. began to take on sort of like deja vu, <laughs> you know, each one became the same, mm. just with only the names were changed, yeah. the, you know, the, the songs were changed to protect the innocent, etc. So first of all, it was a reaction against that. And now, I don't know where I am, I'm sort of half thinking, you know, we discuss it a bit more than we've discussed anything else. So I don't know, you know, till I get in there. There's no, it's like that thing about how do you write your songs. You know, any way that's imaginable, yeah. that's how it happens. So far, you've done a benefit for John Sinclair. You've done the Attica thing, which was at uh, the Apollo. Yeah, Fillmore we did a jam with, with Zappa. Zappa. And you did this one that was a charity. On the album we've done a couple of songs about Ireland. Have you thought of going over there and maybe doing... Yeah, we thought of it a lot of yeah. time, you know. Uh, a, we can't leave America or mm -hmm. until we know how we stand or we couldn't come back probably. Yeah. Or it'd be hard to get back, you know, mm -hmm. whichever way the wind blows. On the album, the money from Sunday Buddy Sunday, Love of the Irish, yeah. is supposed to go to the civil rights movement mm. in Ireland and New York. And Angela's money was supposed to go towards whatever she yeah. was struggling through. And uh, what else was there? Was one of them? Uh, whatever it was. Yeah. Whether we can get it out of the, the system or not is another thing we're yeah. going to try. That's the intention. The article is to go to mm. the people who need help there and it gets down to what can somebody 
in the position we're in do. You feel there's a lot of people that are in the position that, that you're in that aren't putting back some of the, say, money. Is it, to use that, you know, yeah, money's the whole yeah, the ball money game, you know. That they've taken out. Yeah, but the, the, I can understand them because I was in there. You know when you say you write songs like maybe Attica or yeah. Sunday, Bloody Sunday, yeah. you know, do you think they have any effect on... I don't on know, you know, I, you know it, it isn't, it looks like more preachy than it is. Yeah. It's because uh, I call it artistic or, you know, whatever it is, it's no more or less than anybody else, mm. but artists take the op opportunity the to make that their life, to express themselves, mm. it's in painting, whatever it is. Mm. And most other people express it by shouting or playing football or whatever they do right. on the weekend, you know. So, you know, I hear about, I'm over in America and I hear about the 13 people shot and I react immediately. But being what I am, I react in four to the bar with a break in the middle, yeah. you know. I don't say, my God, what's happening? We should do something about it. I go, it was Sunday, buddy, Sunday, they shot the people, you know, and I, yeah. that's how I do it. Yeah. And uh, it's not like the Bible or nothing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all over now, you know, it's yeah. gone out, it's finished and there's no more to it. It's not there to be digested and pulled apart like uh, yeah, the I mean, Mona Lisa like, you know, or something. people you know? on the street or things like that, do you think? If they think about it, that's about all there is mm. to it, really. I you know? thought, personally, I... And it's also I, to yeah. say to all the people that yeah. might be thinking the same as us, or same as me, or same as Yoko, that uh, they're not alone, unlike and imagine that we're not the only one. I call it a uh, working class hero with chocolate on, you know. Yeah. It was sincere. I was trying to think of it in terms of children because uh, I'll go back to Yoko again because it's imagined all her thing. A lot of her art is just pure mind work, which is imagining. The first thing you've got to do before you even start is imagine yeah. some situation. And saying that and not making it so complicated people don't understand it people now are attacking me for writing simplistic lyrics well if i want more praise i can write more walrus and surrealism yeah and i might do it for kicks but mm -hmm. not just so as people say it's good or it's bad mm -hmm. and the point now is to say whatever i'm trying to say as simply as the music that yeah that i like which is rock and roll mm -hmm. and to match the lyric to the music yeah you know, so it's what pop or luma, get out of Ireland. Life's too short, yeah. you know, suddenly, you know, you're 30 or whatever it is, and it's all, there's all these things going on in the and world. things that you haven't done. There's mm, so much to yeah. do, and uh, do one, one criticism yeah. sometime in New York by, mm. in America, from in, yeah. on a rock magazine, was saying, please write us some images, you know. Mm. Don't say just, uh, you know, yeah. uh, whatever you're saying, just make us some images, you know. Well, so I, I say yeah. to them, you know, get drunk or do whatever you do, lie on the bed and make your own time images. Yeah. Write, pick them out of the book, of, out of a dictionary, random. When you see other acts coming up, mm -hmm. you know, big people that come up, say, every two or three years, like Bowen, yeah. and all these things they're going through, and yeah. if you do you think you'll learn or you're, you're doing everything wrong, do you ever feel <laughs> sorry for them in some way? I don't know right? about sorry, you, you, yeah. you think about it. You just, uh, the first thing, seems to be I don't know you sort of what they say in the the musicals changes you know yeah. they, they get more insecure as the bigger they get so mm. they start saying I'm you know we're great or whatever it is you know, mm. go through. but I don't know it's like somebody said you can't tell anybody nothing ever there's nobody I can uh, think you know who do we know that we could say well look he did that and that's where he goofed I mean you can sing about it is that your own experience that you don't really expect anybody to think oh so they did that and then that happened so we won't do it no. do you still feel vulnerable say criticism and, uh, and things like that i can't really answer it you know if somebody I mean, smiles we feel yeah. happy and if they frown we feel unhappy but we're, we're not gonna uh drop out yeah because uh the beatles third record was below par and then Ox Argent Pepper, you know, I mean, it's the praise and the criticism equals itself out. Yeah. This is talk 
being objective about it, not just being emotional as you read it. You know, as far as your songwriting is concerned, how mm. prolific are you? I mean, over prolific and because there's stuff that you haven't recorded. It's just that I don't even bother writing half of it, you know, because uh, I mean, she unwound yeah. me enough so yeah. it, it just poured out, you know. I, mean, okay, I, so I lost in yeah. a, bit, a lot of inhibitions and, and mm. snobbery about you don't do this and you don't go to yeah. that chord mm. and you don't do it like this, you know, which uh, yeah. I, we'd even had in Liverpool, you know. Mm. And uh, like, you know, it's no good unless it's this kind of black music or it's no good unless it plays that kind of and all those things were building up over the years and I still have it a lot but it's a lot that even tightens up the prolificness I can see how I always heard story about writers or whatever they were drying up you know when they were whatever age it was they yeah. supposed that any art yeah. supposed to dry up mm -hmm. I always told myself no it's not true it's not true you get in a, mm -hmm. such a, a bag you don't yeah. know you're in it and then you've limited yourself and you wonder why there's nowhere to go, you know? And you either try and repeat yourself or or you just fade off. How much does Phil have an influence on you? Well, I don't know. Are you still filming? You know, you've made a few films together. Yes, yes. Uh, well, we, our, our people, as best we could, film the concert thing. Yeah. Which I mean, she knows like, to film me what I know about recording, so mm. that's the sort of little details we can teach each other. Editing is her bag. Yeah. Well, sound or film, good editor. And so uh, the latest film will be that one. We filmed the yeah. Sinclair thing. Yeah. Our people are cutting it, and we'll finish the cutting. On this one, we'll probably cut it all. Yeah. We have a little group, you know, like yeah. almost a group of musicians who are filmmakers. Yeah. It's very, I don't, yeah. you know, about Phil influencing me. It's like, uh, you know, it's like the old bit, like, you know, like when you were working with George that time, and then you get yeah. some people like the Stones working with Andrew. Uh, I just wondered, you know, how do we work together? We work fine, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the records. Yeah, yeah. Do you find that, say, you see, I, for yeah. me, it's that uh, maybe he'll start, it's, it's, all, it's the same relation. I keep going back to, like, me and Yoko, any two people. You know, it, it's the same yeah. sort of game, even recording. Now, if you both, mm. you stop each other going too far one way or the other. You know, if, you, yeah. if you're if you out with them, you, you tend to do so. You know, if you drink mm. too much wine, she eats too much chocolate cake. Yeah. Well, you'll help each other on that, right? Oh, so it's the same with the recording. Now, so there's the three of us there, both really a lot of energy, mm. the three of us. And so there's that thing going on all the time. Uh, does he have, does he, uh Maybe act as a disciplinarian. No, uh, he needs as much discipline as I do. Mm. He's even more erratic than I am. Yeah. Phil is not like you imagine him, yeah. which is a robot that comes in. He's like a highly sensitive, charged guy who can hardly stay in the same spot. So between the three of us, like three artists working yeah. together, and I can't describe it any other way. It's not quite like Richard Williams described it, nor quite like I could describe it. But if we got you four versions of what happened, we couldn't film it because it wouldn't happen. So there's no way of describing it. It's just very strange, you know, everybody's taking the different roles all the time. Yeah. Certainly, uh, for me, I enjoy it. It's functional because uh, a few, half of uh, the first album and quite a few tracks on the second we'd already laid down before he came in. It still was functional to have somebody out there. You think you can get too near your own product? There is a tendency yeah. to do that, and that's... Yeah, where you get some people write, record, and mix, produce everything themselves. You can get out sort of punching a hole in the middle of the record. Yeah, well, I am yeah. like that. We both are. Uh, it is, you know, you like to get into it, even down to what's yeah. printed on the sleeve. And I do do that, so nothing does happen. But I don't know how he influenced me. He's just another rocker, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, uh, he's he's just another rocker that we that grooves in the studio with. Mm -hmm. And uh, he certainly is a master of echo. I mean, you know, that's that's it. You know? The master of rock and roll. And it's good to work with. Him. Mm -hmm. That's. About it, I guess. Well, I don't know. 
And there's no way of telling you. I could say, look, oh, this track we I, did I this, and that track we did this, mm. and we just produced I mean, elephants. Does he sort of turn around to you and maybe say, well, that wasn't very good, John, or you could have done it better this way? Or I mean, does he throw in creative ideas? Oh, uh, he's creative, all right. I'd sooner you just saw a session one time <laughs> than try and explain yeah. it. How does it happen? We go in, it depends what song. Some songs we have a complete arrangement. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's like almost like the garden where we know what's going to happen and yeah. Phil will try and make it happen the best it can. Another one could. I don't know. I don't know. It's like, I can't even explain it. It's nice to have him yeah. there. I, you know, I, it's hard to say anything mm. realistic about an artistic relationship yeah, well, without like, hurting yeah. the other artists because they're all so sensitive, you mm. know, and w we all are. So, I, I, you know, I could say, yes, mm. uh, without yeah. him, it'd be all right. With him, it's great. Without him, it'd be great. It's just mm. good to work with somebody else. Uh, I don't know how to say it influence wise. You know, he influences me because he's an old rocker. If I say, Angel Baby, you know, and he knows what I'm talking about, yeah. right? In that way, it's good. How much does an album take you out of you physically and mentally? I don't mm -hmm. know. It's always a letdown, you know. Is it? Everything's you're always a bit of a letdown because, like after a concert or after a, a record, mm -hmm. it's the doing it which is the thing. Will the four of you ever play together again? I don't think we, none of us ever think of it except for when somebody asks us, yeah. you know. It's just like, and say, the I'm thing is, if they, yeah, uh, George played on a couple of tracks. Would you like to sort of play on, say, some of George's songs? Listen, if George was recording now, yeah. I'd say, excuse me, Roy, we're going over to the session, all yeah. right? So if any friend was recording and I was in the mood for it, yeah. I'd be over there. And it, I'd, if George ever called me, I'd go over. Mm. Or if Ringo called me, I'd go over. Paul called me, I'd go over. Yeah. It would never be the same because then it would, I'd be on George's session. Yeah. And uh, although it was always each of our sessions, I would do exactly what he told me you know, yeah. and enjoy it. And I would do it. But I'm not the greatest session man around, you know. I don't haven't done much of the gigs where everybody's playing on everybody's session. Yeah. I prefer to, you know, I'm a bit more selfish. I'm either doing it or not doing it. But I certainly wouldn't uh, turn it down out of hand mm. because. Uh, Ringo and George gig for me on both albums. The Ringo's yes. on the first one, George on the second. In fact, George was freer on Imagine. You know, out of that that bag, yeah. you know, we, we worked well. Do you find that you've got to safeguard yourself against hangers on and things like this? Uh, it depends what way you mean safeguard. I try and use as little energy on anything that isn't to do with work as possible. Yeah. And so. I don't use a lot of energy mm. keeping people away. Yeah. I just live and move in such a way that I am usually a, just ahead of it. You, know? you finally got a lot of freedom though here in New York. Yeah. Well, probably because uh, you know, there's a lot of people here, you know, mm. and you can just mm. you can vanish in New York. Yeah. We go out and so. get pissed with the band, you know, yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, it's, yeah. it's fine. Mm. More so because there's. There's so many other quotes names living around here, yeah. and they're all living within Manhattan Island. So we're not standing out so much. We're just one of many people that are hanging out here.